Welcome back to the Honeybee uh, for Grasshopper tutorials and we've been through envelope geometry and materials program, internal mass, internal loads and schedules. And we're going to finish up now with natural ventilation and HVAC systems. For the natural ventilation, the object that you should place onto the canvas is here at sorry. Um, Honeybee set EP airflow there. And this gives us a few different options for how we want to deal with airflow in the zone. The first thing I should point out is that um, Energy Plus as a simulation engine is a, um, a it makes a very important assumption that all of the air in the zone is fully mixed. That is, it doesn't stratify, it doesn't um, uh, have uh, sort of differential um, thermal properties based on solar radiation or um, adjacency to walls or anything like that. It is uh, one zone, it's a sort of watertight zone or airtight zone, and there's um, one temperature of air inside that zone. Uh, it's a relatively simple kind of model to do more complex modeling it requires entirely different uh, type of program structure, a lot more complex, a lot longer runtime, and um, the accuracy of it is uh, questionable. So the uh, so this is actually a very good simulation uh, modeling type, uh, but it does have this limitation or assumption. And that limitation is something you need to keep in mind as you are modeling. The thing that, that um, Energy Plus knows is what the air, com air temperature coming in, as well as the, the speed and, um, and level uh, elevation. And uh, it knows the air speed and temperature going out. And, um, and that's sort of the closed system. It doesn't know or doesn't take into account the presence of exterior obstacles, so like this building that I have next door, it's not going to know that um, this window here is probably obstructed from a lot of airflow, or that this tree might be uh, blocking airflow into this window. So these are things that that you need to take into account in, in uh, understanding how you're modeling the airflow, because Energy Plus does not. Uh, that being said, it is possible to model a variety of different types of airflow, including um, fans or um, windows or even stack ventilation. And this component here gives you sort of uh, the window in, into that. Um, interzone airflow is for multi-zone models, and I'm not covering multi-zone models in this, um, in this set of tutorials, so I'm going to skip that. The next one is natural ventilation type, and you can see that there's four basic options, no natural ventilation, window natural ventilation, custom stack and wind ventilation, and then fan-driven ventilation. So the um, so, so there's um, a, a, a few different options, and depending on which one you select, these um, inputs are populated differently. So actually, I'm going to pull up a slider so you can see this. If we connect uh, zero was was no natural ventilation, uh, these all go away. So there's nothing going on there. Just zone in, zone out, and we're done. Uh, can actually attach a panel here, and uh, it doesn't give us any information, but it will. So now, if we go to number one, wi window natural ventilation, you'll see that this populates, and this is kind of cool it uh, automatically reads the area of the windows that we have. Expand this even more here. There. Zone 1 is a surface with glazed area 5.7 square meters, has an operable area of 2.9 square meters, and effective area of the operable portion is 2.9 square meters. Um, and, and a whole bunch of other things that relate to buoyancy in the zone. And these you, you can set right here. You can set when the window is going to open and close, so a minimum indoor temperature and a maximum indoor temperature, and you, you probably want to align those with the thermostat set points for your heating and cooling systems. The minimum outdoor temperature for natural ventilation, so that it's not too cold, uh, you're not getting cold air in, 
uh, and the maximum outdoor temperature so that you're um, not bringing in really hot air into the to the zone. Um, and so why don't we go ahead and, and set those maybe for um, 21 degrees Celsius for my minimum. And since I think my um, cooling set point is probably going to be around 26 degrees, I'm going to put my maximum um, uh, natural ventilation at 25 degrees. And that way I won't have windows open when I've got the air conditioning on. For the minimum outdoor temperature, I'm going to say that, say, 15 degrees Celsius, eh, maybe 18 degrees Celsius is, um, is about right. And then the maximum outdoor, we can put at, say, uh, 30 degrees Celsius. And so anytime the outdoor temperature is um, less than 30 degrees or between 18 and 30, and the indoor temperature is between 21 and 25, we'll get uh, natural ventilation. Then you can set a schedule that um, can be 8,760 hours of when that's open or closed. Say you have um, some times when it, it can't be open, then you can use this. I'm going to skip it for now and just assume it's always open when it can be. And then a fraction of glazed uh, area that's operable. So it automatically read how much area was on that, but if I want to say uh, that there's only 50% of the window is operable, then this will, it should uh, change it. The effective operable area is 2.9 square meters. I think that's what we have before. Was the Oh, right. So it's uh, by default, it is assumed that 0.5 is the default. So we can change this if we want the whole thing. Say it's a casement window. We have the whole window uh, be operable uh, at 100% there. Then you can see this changes to 100% being operable. And similarly, you can set the, um, the, the glazing height. This is the glazing area. The glazing height, the, the fraction that is operable, um, you can also change these discharge coefficients, either wind or stack, which would prevent um, stack ventilation from coming in or from or wind from coming in. So um, you can read more about that if you hover over. It explains it really well. So that's natural ventilation. And I'm going to group these guys all together, keep this nice and organized and move on to HVAC systems. So as I mentioned for the natural ventilation, the zone is one airtight zone with um, sort of a, uh, um, a closed volume of air uh, contained in it. And Energy Plus natively has a lot of ways of modeling different types of HVAC systems. For this tutorial, and probably just to get you started, the, there's something called an ideal air loads system that is uh, the sort of beginner system, the easiest one to set up and use. And you can find that here at Honeybee Set Ideal Air Loads Parameters. There. And uh, so like everything else, take your HB zones and swing it through here and then um, hook up your data. So now we've got the HVAC, and there's just a few simple um, sets of things to input here. One is whether you have outdoor air um, or how it, it um, sets outdoor air, and this actually relates directly to setup inputs we had before for internal loads. And back here at ventilation per area and ventilation per person, um, we set how much airflow is moving through the zone. Uh, this is basically air for breathing. And here we can set whether the or how the HVC system delivers that air. It can be delivered as, um, you can say none, you don't want it to deliver any of that air. So um, in which case you'll see that uh, there's, there's much less airflow, there's no airflow through the zone. 
um, or you can see it do it as a, a maximum of ventilation or sum of ventilation. ASHRAE 62, uh, which is what most um, jurisdictions are using for standard for fresh air, requires the sum of those. So, and this is by default set as the sum. I think. Well, if it's not, maybe we should uh, make sure that it is by putting in number two there. And then looking at the README, which says zone one has its outdoor air requirements set to sum. So that's right. We can also set the cool supply air and the, the heating supply air temperatures. Uh, I like to leave these at default. I think it, by default it, it's at 50 degrees Celsius and uh, 13 degrees Celsius. There's no hover over instructions here, but I'm just going to leave those. And then um, the max cooling and heating capacity, if you wanted to set that, um, the danger of setting that is that you could have times when the um, system requires more heating or cooling than it's able to provide, and so it would skew your energy results. So that's it for HVAC systems. The only other thing that you need to know about this is, again, this is an ideal load system. So it is supplying just as much heating or cooling as it's needed to satisfy the thermostat set points. Uh, those thermostat set points were set back here under schedules at heating set point schedule and cooling set point schedule. We can see that uh, heating and cooling set point schedule pretty quickly by uh, looking at visualizing the um, set points using this these components and here we can see that um, it looks like the heating set point is between 20 it's 21 degrees during most of the day and then 16 degrees during the night with a more setback in the summer and so 16 to, tw to 21 degrees and then the cooling is between 24 so it's um, 24 during the day and 27 night time setback so that gives you an idea of what the um, what the HVAC system is is set to, and actually that makes me think that this I did not set my natural ventilation correctly. This should be down at 23 probably, in order to not overlap with the cooling. So let's run this and. Uh, and see uh, where we are in terms of our energy use with this system that we set up. And um, the while it's running, the ideal load system provides just as much energy as you need to heat or cool to that set point, and it does not take into account the coefficient of performance (COP) of the actual systems. The cooling or heating systems. And so you really need to post-process that part of it uh, onto uh, the results. So let's see if we have any errors, zero errors. There's a whole bunch of warnings, and it looks like these are standard warnings. So um, here I've hooked up uh, electrical equipment, lights, heating, and cooling. And uh, so you see there's 7,500 kilowatt hours of cooling. 1276 of, of heating, but in order to tell how much actual heating and cooling energy you would use, um, you need to multiply it by the coefficient of performance. And so, uh, for instance, a standard heat pump uh, for cooling would probably have a, a COP of about 4 or 5, so um, you'd actually divide by, uh, say, 4. Uh, so 7508 divided by 4 would give us the actual um, energy use for that system. A uh, standard boiler might be around a COP of about 0.8. So you would divide 1276 divided by 0.8 to get the actual heating numbers. 
So I hope that helps explain the HVAC systems and ventilation systems and uh, provides a quick overview of all of the sort of embedded assumptions and data in the HB zone component. Uh, there's a lot here, uh, a lot more to play with and to, to look at, but I think this should get you started and, and get rolling. The last thing I wanted to mention was that it's uh, as you get deeper into energy modeling, get more comfortable with it, it's always good to go to the source itself. And one of the really great things about Honeybee is it makes it pretty transparent. So if you go to the uh, folder where your work is being uh, saved here, you can see this IDF file, uh, which is what is being, um, uh, what, what, is, what is running the simulation. And if you double click on that IDF file, that will open this EP launch uh, browser window and from here there's all kinds of ways to access the native uh, data. The, the sort of most useful is probably this IDF editor where um, you can open it and see, press control L and you'll um, um, uh, just see the, the classes that have been populated and you can see all the different things that we just set. So for instance the ideal load system uh, you can see it has uh, the maximum heating supply air at uh, 50 degrees and the max minimum cooling of 13 and it's using the outdoor ventilation rates that we set as a sum, et cetera, et cetera. And so each one of these different objects has um, all that smarts embedded in it and it all should be quite um, transparent. Kind of the, the inputs from Honeybee uh, into uh, here the IDF and ultimately it's the IDF that's being run by Energy Plus. By the same token if you want to know more about Energy Plus or you're having questions or problems this help menu is a fantastic place to start. The Energy Plus input output reference is a highly detailed uh, compendium you can see it's 2200 pages of all of the different inputs and outputs that Energy Plus can give you. And uh, this is not uh, what I would call pleasure reading, but it's a good way of, um, if you have any questions, to uh, search through this and try to uh, find the right answers. So I think that's a good place to leave you. Uh, good luck in your um, energy modeling. Uh, have fun, enjoy, and um, uh, Till next time, I'll sign off.